Hi ninjas, and welcome to another visual guide of Sekiro. After going through again the Ashina castle and fighting the invading forces of the interior ministry, you climb back to the top where you faced Genichiro. And as with Genichiro, once you touch the roof, a cutscene plays revealing a huge secret. <laughs> さあ、As the owl has finished speaking, you can approach him and talk with him. But before you do, do note one important thing. If you pick the choice we go through in this video, you cannot upgrade your healing guard anymore after this in this playthrough. And I will tell you soon why, so just keep that in mind and go give Emma your gore seeds now. You can find Emma at Ishin's quarters. Now as you go through the dialogue, he will tell you to obey the Iron Code of the Shinobi and orders you to forsake your master. You are given a very important option at this point, which will dictate on how the game will progress from here. And in this video, we go through what happens if you choose to obey Owl, side with him and forsake Kuro. If you wish to see what happens in the other option, I have another video for that, which I will link here and in the description of this video. それでこそ this is a visual guide on how to defeat Emma, the Gentle Blade. Even though Emma has been kind and smiling throughout the whole playthrough up until this point, she is an immensely deadly adversary, so do not at any point underestimate her at all. She is a master of the Ashina style of swordsmanship and very quick of her deadly moves. First up, we'll go through her basic attacks. When Emma is close to you, she'll do a 3-hit combo, where first she does a downward diagonal slash, followed by a horizontal slash, and finally an upward slash that ends the combo. Each of the hits do moderate damage on its own if they hit you. Her second type of basic attacks include one where she looks like she does a dash, but only closes a bit, does two slashes and then dashes backwards. Next we'll look at her dash attacks, which she has quite a few different types. When you are at a medium distance to her, she might quickly dash towards you with an upward slash attack that deals high damage. This can happen either on its own or as a continuation to many of her attacks. The second dash attack is something she'll use when she is next to you or at a short distance where she charges up a short while by placing the sword in her right side and then dash past you to your right side with an attack that deals high damage. She also has a version from the opposite side as well. After this she will immediately turn towards you and begin charging a short range thrust attack. Even if you deflect the initial dash attack she will still dash through you but if you don't remain in her range she won't use the thrust attack. As per usual, use your Mikiri counter to negate the thrust and deal a lot of posture damage on her. The third and final dash is a jumping thrust attack that is very familiar from Genichiro Way of Tomoe's fight, whereas if you are at medium or short distance and try to heal, Emma will instantly jump towards you with the specific thrust attack. And as always, use your Mikiri counter to negate this attack as well as to deal huge posture damage on her. If you deflect this thrust, Emma will instantly try to use a perilous sweep attack as a follow-up. 
Whenever you see Emma sheath her sword and hold it in front of her, she will prepare to use the Ashina cross attack that is in Yaijutsu attack mostly remembered from the Ashina elite Jinsuke Saze. This does 2 hits that deal high damage or almost a full health bar worth of damage. If you block the Ashina cross, it does moderate damage in the form of chip damage as it goes through your guard. Deflecting this negates the damage, however you can easily avoid it by going behind her. She can either use the Ashina cross just on its own without any prompt or follow-up, but also as a follow-up to many attacks. When Emma charges up an attack by having her sword and scabbard at her left side, she soon launches a strong 4 attack combo, where each attack deals moderate damage and depending on how you react to the last hit makes a difference. If you take the hit, the combo simply ends. If you block the attack, she pushes you to the side and goes behind you as your lock-on breaks and charges up the Ashina cross immediately. But if you manage to deflect her final attack, you instead push her to the side, leaving her vulnerable for an attack. In addition to her numerous thrust attacks, Emma also has other types of perilous attacks. For example, the sweep attack, that she only uses as a follow-up when some of her attacks are deflected, such as after deflecting her thrust attacks or after deflecting the Ashina Cross's last slash or simply one of her basic attacks. As per usual, jump straight up and stomp on her to deal posture damage and as you are landing, be sure to do the two slashes and then continue the assault. But one of her most dangerous and hardest attacks is her grab attack, where Emma puts away her sword, twirls her hands around and then takes a step forward. If she hits you, she will grab you, fling you in the air, and then slam you on the floor, dealing high damage. Immediately after the slam, she pulls out her sword and does a strong slash while you're lying on the floor, so be sure to quickly roll out of the slash attack's way. Her step forward has a very hard tracking, so if you try to avoid it behind her or to her sides, she will most likely catch you. Jumping and stomping on her might sometimes work, but requires a lot of precision, timing, and luck. So the best option would be to run directly backwards out of her reach and then come back as the animation has ended. Another method of avoiding the grab is to use the Loaded Umbrella prosthetic tool, which completely blocks the grab attack. Now let's look at some tactics and tips. At first this fight is immensely hard. Emma is aggressive in her attack patterns and all of the attacks deal a lot of damage and she has multiple different attack types that she uses relentlessly. But once you start recognizing those attacks and know how to avoid them, you can deal attacks of your own and see that she does not have much HP or posture. So pressure is the key where you attack her until she deflects you and see what the counter is. Usually it is a single slash that you can deflect and then continue with your assault but sometimes she dashes back only to quickly come back with another of her attacks, so be ready to defend yourself. In case of the grab attack, you can use the loaded umbrella to block it and then follow up with the projected force to deal damage, but if you're short of spirit emblems, running away is a valid option. However, if your back is against the wall, you can wall jump over her, take some distance and then continue the fight. Emma does have a slight weakness in many of her attacks that you can exploit though, where once she attacks you, dash past her blade to her right side to get behind her. Here you can use the Ichimonji double to deal good damage on Emma and keep your posture low for her massive combos. Should you need to heal, make sure you have a good distance and see her walking slowly far away, since if she is closer to you or walking towards you, she will immediately use the jumping thrust attack. Also, if she has just used the Ashina cross, she'll take a while to recover from the animation, making this a good moment to heal. Keep up the relentless assault until she deflects you, see what she uses and counter them as shown before, or dash behind her when she flashes at you and use the Ichimonji double and you're sure to deliver the death blow. Congratulations on the victory! But if you thought that was it, guess again! For this merely fueled the ruler of Ashina's hatred towards you to literally wreath the arena in flames.
This is a visual guide on how to defeat the final boss of the Shura route, Ashina Ishi. Ishin isn't the fear ruler of Ashina, whose skill with the blade earned Ashina's independence for no reason. And even though he is old, frail and ill, he is still stronger, faster and has cunning beyond almost everyone in the game. Luckily for you, Ishin has a really similar moveset as Emma with a slightly different and adjusted tempo, so the moveset is easier to explain and learn. Ishin's basic attacks includes a similar dash attack that Emma uses, but this attack has a clearer telegraph when he leans towards you. Also, his dash has a longer distance than Emma's, so be wary of that. He also has a simple 3-hit combo that is identical to Emma's basic 3-hit combo, which he uses when he is close to you. He first does a downward swing, waits a bit, then does a horizontal swing, waits again a bit, and finally does an upward swing. The combo continues if you receive or block the hits, but deflecting it ends the combo. Deflecting anywhere within the combo makes him quickly switch to different attack types, which we will go through soon. His second type of basic attack is one where he starts to circle to your right side while raising his sword into the front and then doing an upward slash, and after that he spins around and does a horizontal slash from your right side. Both of these slashes deal moderate damage. Another very similar type of attack is where he casually without a sidestep raises his sword to his left side and does a calm horizontal slash. Deflecting simply ends the combo, but blocking makes him immediately use a perilous thrust attack. As per usual, use your Mikiri counter to deal a huge posture damage. His other dash is also identical to Emma's, where he raises his sword to his side and then dashes past you, slashing horizontally. Usually after this, he takes his long step diagonally back in front of you, but sometimes he stays there having his sword pointed at you for 2 seconds. If during this time you come close to him, he will instantly use the Ichimonji on you. Another basic attack combo is where Ishin takes a small step forward, spins his sword above him and then uses first a right to left horizontal slash and then a downward slash. Deflecting the second attack ends the combo, but if you block it, Ishin will make a quick sword sheeting while also signaling a perilous sweep attack. To avoid this as per usual, jump straight up and stomp on him to deal posture damage. Being a master of the Ashina style sword, Ishin uses a familiar move to you, the Ichimonji double, where he raises the sword above his head and charges for a second. After the charge, he unleashes a heavy downward attack. Deflecting the first Ichimonji simply ends the move, but if you block it, he will use the second Ichimonji immediately afterwards that does high damage. Also, if you try to avoid the Ichimonji by jumping or dashing backwards, there is a really high risk that the Ichimonji double that follows up will simply hit you, dealing high damage. If you dodge it to the side, Ishin will follow to the side with the second slash. The Ichimonji can be dodged easily by circling or dashing behind him, where you can deal free direct hits on Ishin. Another familiar attack that both Emma and yourself have used is the Ashina Cross, where Ishin sheets his sword, waits a second or two, before unleashing the devastating double Yaijutsu attack. Blocking this will result in massive chip damage, while deflecting it negates the damage completely. You can anticipate the attack as soon as you see the glint in his sword, marking the moment to deflect. However, if you are or move close to him when he sheets his sword, Ishin will instead do a normal upward attack, followed by a perilous sweep attack. So whenever he sheets his sword, it's best to approach him, deflect the first attack and immediately jump straight up to avoid the sweep attack and stomp on him to deal posture damage. As of Ishin's counter attacks, when you do normal attacks on him, he always deflects you on your second attack and then uses a counter. His most used counter attack is an upward slash followed by a second horizontal slash. If you block this, he'll continue with the three hit slash, but deflecting the attacks makes him switch to different attacks. Sometimes after deflecting one of his basic attacks, he begins to circle to your right side with three steps and then proceed to use a perilous thrust attack that does moderate damage. Both deflecting it and using the Mikiri counter simply ends this attack, so favor the Mikiri counter to deal more posture damage. One of his counters begins as soon as he has deflected your attack, Ishin immediately tackles you with his elbow, having his sword ready with a follow-up perilous thrust attack. And as always, use your Mikiri counter to deal posture damage. And like Emma, he also has the same type of perilous grab attack, where he signals it by twirling his hands around his body and then taking a short distance step. If this grab hits you, he flings you in the air the same way Emma did, and as you land on the floor, he always immediately follows up with the Asina cross. But in Ishin's case, you have plenty of time to move out of the way, and as with Emma, the grab can be negated completely with the loaded umbrella. Ishin has multiple modes of simply staying idle, where he walks menacingly. 
He has a slow walk towards you, a fast walk towards you that happens when he has slow walked for at least 4 seconds, but the most treacherous one is the third and final walk, the sideways walk. During this time, if you attack him with any normal attack or combat arts, he does a so-called God Step, where he avoids the attack with a slight dodge and instantly counters you with either a quick spinning horizontal slash or the grab attack. So if you do a single normal slash that he dodges, you have ample amount of time to see whether you have to deflect the slash or either shield or run away from the grab attack. As you deal the first death blow, things start to heat up literally, as he begins to charge up his strongest attack, the One Mind. But in addition to this, he first channels the fires in the arena, and after a 2 second cast, he makes the first initiation by doing 2 light slashes where the flames fan up a bit. This by itself does not kneel damage, but rather signals the fire areas. After this, he simultaneously starts to charge towards you with the One Mind's first attack, that is a lightning fast Yajuta attack, while the fires below you explode. The first attack of the One Mind deals moderate damage to if it hits you. If you are standing above the fire, it will fling you into the air that deals massive damage and apply the burn status on you. After this, the One Mind's second part applies his godlike speed, for as he is shading his sword, four invisible slashes spin around Ishin that deal light damage per hit, but together dealing moderate damage. And for the third and final hit, Ishin will do another lightning fast dash attack towards you that deals high damage and knocks you off your feet. Together, the whole one mind deals massive damage, and if you don't have full health, you will most likely die. To counter the one mind, first look where you are standing to avoid the blast of fire. It happens only once during the one mind, so you don't have to pay attention to it after the blast. Next, time your deflection for the first attack as well. Immediately after the first attack, dash backwards to avoid the second attack phase, and then simply deflect the third attack. If the deflection prove difficult, simply circle behind quickly while the second attack is going on, since the third attack only tracks you while you are in front of him. But you can prevent the whole one mind combo from happening when he begins casting the fires by using either shinobi firecrackers or a strong combat art. The mortal draw works well, but my suggestion and preference is by using the praying strikes exorcism from the senpo art skill tree, which has a lot faster charge attack, which cancels cast and doesn't cost any spirit emblems. The second phase also features other fire moves, such as the fire wave attack, where when you have a long distance, Ishin places his sword into the ground on his right side, and as she slashes, he releases a wave of fire towards you in a wide line. If this hits you, you will take high damage and get instantly afflicted with the burn status. To avoid this, you can simply jump over it just as Ishin does the slash to prevent the damage. Also, the Susaku's Lotus Umbrella works well, as it completely prevents all damage from fire attacks and burn buildup. And finally, the Fire Ichimonji, where Ishin does the Ichimonji charge up and first hit like normally, but in the second hit, instead of being a normal follow up Ichimonji double strike, is instead a wide swiping close range fire wave attack that deals multiple hits during one animation. Now, let's look at some tactics and tips. Even if he is sick to be literally hours away from death, Ishin is still the swordsman who wrestled the independence of Ashina back, worthy enough to be the final boss of this route. Ishin has a ton of dangerous attacks, but mainly this fight's difficulty lies in his counterattacks. Many times when players are wounded against him from the counterattacks, they panic, leaving themselves open for Ishin to punish with his other attacks. But as with many human-type bosses, be aggressive and try to be as close to him as much as possible to keep him on the defensive. Your best option is to learn how to deflect his fast counters, so if he deflects your attacks and replies with his own, be quick to respond. Most of the attacks are perilous attacks with two thrust attacks and the Ashina cross, so Mikiri counters the thrust attacks and in the case of the Ashina cross, remember to immediately walk next to him for Ishin to cancel the Ashina cross and make him switch to the slash and sweep combo that is easier to count. If he begins to use the Ichimonji, you can simply walk behind him and attack him there. After the first death blow, be sure to cancel his one mind fire explosion combos whenever he uses it with either the firecrackers or with the exorcism, Ichimonji or mortal draw combat arts. And in case of the fire Ichimonji or the fire wave attack, get behind him and attack him there to get free direct hits. You can use the Suzaku's Lotus Umbrella to shield yourself from the fire damage, but watch out for the fire Ichimonji, as it does multiple hits within one animation that easily breaks your posture. Keep close to him as much as possible and keep attacking him, deflect his counters to the best of your abilities, and you're sure to put an end to the ruler of Ashina for good. Congratulations for the victory! You are rewarded with the battle memory of Ishin and the One Mind Combat Art.
which works just like in the fight against Ishin, where you first cheat your sword by pressing L1 and R1 at the same time. If you release the L1, you simply take your sword out from your sheet, but if you instead release your R1, you launch the first attack. As the first phase is over, the second attack with the four lightning fast hits initiates, and finally after the second attack, pressing R1 again will let you execute the final attack of the combo. This costs spirit emblems to use, so be mindful of that. And now I will show you an example run on how to defeat both bosses of the Shura ending along with possible mistakes and how to recover from them. First is a normal run. My Up next is a run with prosthetic tools and combat arts used.
再びシュラAnd with that we will wrap up with the video. You have now beaten the game and gotten the short ending that is known as the Shura ending, which is the so called worst ending, so enjoy the ending cutscene. Also afterwards you are awarded with the Sekijo attire and the Divine Air gauntlet. If you want to see how to get the other endings and what happens if you select a different option when speaking with Owl, I will link these videos in the description below. I hope this video was of help, leave a like if it was, subscribe for more, and if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, stay vigilant, and I'll see you next time! Fight, fight, fight if you wanna live.